my screen is visible okay anybody has any questions regarding previous lecture is anybody ever going through lectures again or are you folks not getting time Okay. So today we are going to work uh, with mongoose. From where the data folder come in the sixth folder, I added this folder. I added all these files. I also exported a database. This database. And this is from that. Okay. Cool. So today we are going to uh, understand. We are going to talk about Mongoose. Mongoose is a package. NPM package. Which uh, lets us connect to MongoDB. Using on Node.js, right? So we'll start with that. I'll show you the documentation for Mongoose. Okay, just need to stop sharing my screen for a second. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So this is the documentation for Mongoose. We are going to use this library. It has its own website. So <clears throat> this is the basic example. First we require Mongoose, then we connect to the database. Right. This is the database URL. We give this connection URI and then we create a model, right? We create a model and basically what it is doing is we are giving uh, MongoDB uh, the protocol that is being used. Then we are giving host name Then we are giving port number Then we are giving the database that we want to use so we can uh, replace this with something else if we want to use any other database okay after that we are creating uh, this database can have multiple collections so for each collection we have to create a model so if let's say this is a collection called cats so we will create a model for that collection so this collection has uh, these properties name right uh, I'm going to uh, do this, all of this through code, but just giving you a basic example. Then we can create uh, when we can create a new object from this uh, class, and then we can save. We can say uh, that object dot save. This will save the uh, save the document to the database in the collection called cats. Okay, so let's do that first of all before we. <clears throat> Uh, let's just be, uh, install this library. Okay. I'm going to say npm install mongoose. First of all, we are going to work with mongoose only. Then we will create uh, towards the end. We will, once we understand how to do CRUD operations, then we will work with, we will create REST API. We will replace uh, this thing, the employees application, CRUD application. We will replace uh, with uh, database instead of using uh, storing data in a file we will use mongodb database to store data this time okay so this package is called let me create a uh, 
Okay. I'll have to remove this myself. Okay, this looks fine. So uh, let's start with a test file. We will test our, all of the code here. Okay, we will test our code here. And this is going to be a uh, test file. I'm, I'm just going to run this by saying load test.js and this will execute, right? Every time I, I want to execute this, I will just say node test, yes, okay? So we can import mongoose. That's the first thing that we need to do. Mongoose, and then we uh, connect to the database, okay? So how we connect to the database is mongoose.connect. So we can give the URI. Let's copy this URI because this is same for us as well. Instead here, let's say uh, mongoose demo, right? <clears throat> and this is going to return a, this is going to return a promise. So instead of doing it like this, I'm going to add a function, say connect database. And here we can await. If everything goes well, we can say console.log uh, connected to database, right? If something goes wrong, then we'll have to wrap it in a try catch and catch the error. Okay. And here we can say console.error could not connect to the database. Okay. I hope you understand what is happening here. So if we say connect database, then you will be able to see whether the connection is successful or not, right? So if I do node test, yes, you will see connect to database is successful. Here we are getting uh, some warning, which is fine. It says mongoose, the strict query option will be switched back to false, blah, blah, blah. You can ignore this, okay? So this is able to connect to the local database that we have, right? Any questions so far? Any questions till this point? No questions? So this is how we connect to the database using Mongoose. But we have uh, not created any function where we can uh, send queries to the database, right? So we will do that. But uh, for sending queries, first we need to create a model for e uh, So let me show you. We don't return from this function. It will automatically return after it uh, reaches this, this line and there is no line to execute, it will automatically return. Okay, <clears throat> so if I just show you, I'll open Mongo uh mongo shell uh okay let's just use it here so mongo sh if i show you show dbs you can see that uh there is no database right now there is no database with the name mongo uh Mongo mongoose demo, right? There is no database right now. That is because we are not interacting with the database, right? So <clears throat> to interact with database, let's first define uh, a model. So I'm going to say user, and I'm going to say mongoose dot 
model. This is how we define a model, right? So it takes two parameters. First parameter it takes as name and second, uh, this which is a string. So this is the name of the collection that we want to interact with. We cannot interact with multiple collections at the same time. So, and the second parameter it takes is a schema. Schema is an object. So let's say uh, this is the name of the <clears throat> of the collection that we want to interact with. So how do we uh, how do we say uh, how do we choose a proper name? So if let's say your collection is named users, right? If your collection is named users, then you have to give it uh, the singular uh, form of this word. So if let's say this was, uh, if you had, if you wanted to create a collection called movie, so you will have to give movie here and there you, uh, it will interact with uh, the collection with the collection which is named movies. Does this make sense? This is like a convention that you have to follow. So if you just give this uh, the name, <clears throat> if you give this a singular name, then it will automatically start interacting with the plural form with uh, lowercase, right? Plural form, lowercase collection, which is uh, named users. Does this make sense? So it will point to this collection, right? All the queries will go to this collection. So if we give a singular name to the collection, uh, will we get error? Actually, it will create, uh, if there is no collection named like users, it will create that collection. So uh, if you want to, if you have a collection name, let's say user, and you want this model, you want this model to connect with only this uh, uh, collection name, then you have to give it uh, explicitly say that, okay? So the second property is an uh, is a schema, which I will come to in a second. And the third is you can give the collection. The third parameter is optional. It is completely completely mm -hmm. optional. Second parameter is also completely optional, but uh, we will use both. We will use uh, name and schema. But if you want to explicitly give the name of the collection, then you can say, let's connect to user only okay don't create a collection named users i already have a collection co uh, with singular uh, name so use this okay but if you don't do this then it will assume that there will there should be a collection named users so i need to interact with that okay so you, either you can give the collection name specifically you can even give users or if you don't give this property this parameter then it will interact with the plural version of this word okay it, it will interact with the collection like this if you give user with capital u it will uh, uh, it will interact with users okay users collection similarly if you give movie it will interact with movies otherwise if you want to interact with something else let's say shows then you have to give it uh, explicitly the name of the collection, right? Like this. Does it make sense? If you don't do this, it will assume that there should be a collection named movies. Okay. In fact, this does not work only for uh, simple words. If let's say you do spy, right? It will automatically convert this to spies. And if you give, let's say, mango it will uh sorry mango then it will say there should be a database called mangoes okay like that okay this was just to give you an example sure i can increase the font size but okay so is this clear Coming to the second parameter, which is the schema. The schema is like a blueprint, right? Second parameter 
so first is the collection name which is a string not a collection name but a model name and this will point to a collection and the second is a schema which is uh, an object and it is a blueprint of the data that you want to store do you understand blueprint blueprint means what are the properties that uh, your collection will have okay and what is the data type so here also we we can give this is optional we don't have to give this uh, object but if you want let's say if you want uh, uh, some some level of validation some level of validation in your node.js code saying that i only want these fields i i only want to add these fields or read these fields then uh, uh, I will give a blueprint or schema. Okay. So how do we define the schema? We say, let's say username is going to be of type string. So here, these are the JavaScript classes that we have, right? This is a JavaScript uh, constructor. So we give directly the class. Okay. So it will uh, use this class while we, when we are uh, adding name, to when we are adding a document uh, to users collection, it will check that the name property should be a string. Okay. Similarly, let's say if we give gender, which is also going to be a string and an email, which is also going to be a string. Let's say a password, which is also going to be a string. Then you can say date of birth which is going to be of type uh, date aren't we created schema in separate function no need to create schema in a separate function we can create in this scope only okay so this will create uh, we can add the schema like this <laughs> there is another way to define schema uh, I will talk about that, but let's just use this way because this is much more simpler. Okay. Uh, it should be model, not model. Okay. So we have string types. We have uh, data type, date of birth, which is a date type. Let's say verified email is also a type. Okay. So we can have, let's say, this is a Boolean. This is also a property. Then we can have uh, some numerical value, say followers count, which is like a number value. So then there are other uh, data types as well. Okay. So these are all the uh, these are all the properties that we can work with for now clear yeah, this is how we define a model once we define a model this model uh, this variable we can name this anything but i'm i'm naming it the same whatever the collect model name i'm giving here i'm naming it the same thing for consistency once we define this this object this object that we get it is actually a class and this class has a lot of useful functions that we can use to interact with the user's collection. Okay. So which proper, which functions does this have? So user dot find one of the functions that that is very important and users dot find one users dot find by ID user dot create. Okay this function will create a user document user dot uh, update one is also a function and then update many is also a function <coughs> user dot find one by id and update is also a function 
so these are i'm listing out all the important functions that we have to talk about okay i i will tell you what these functions will do exactly i'm just giving you what all the functions are available here okay so if you look at this all these functions are available here these functions find one and remove find one and delete find one and replace all these okay find by id and delete delete one delete many so all these functions are available on this uh, model class that we have okay so <laughs> we can use all these functions to do the CRUD operation. And I, I will talk about each function. Uh, one by one, we will talk about these, okay? So for now, let me just add these as comments. Okay. Uh, cool. So I think function create okay so we will test all the cre uh, uh, this create function in this and we will actually call create inside dot then once uh, once the database is connected then we will add this function then we will execute this function okay so how we will create a document so right now if i show you now right now if i show you what i have just uh, done is i have connected to the database and i have also defined a, a model right at this point if i run this uh, if i run this file node test then you will see if i do slow dbs now this mongoose demo has come up this database has appeared now earlier it was not there but once i have created a model once i have created a model this database will come up okay so if i go to if i switch to this database and if i do show collections you will see that uh, the database was not there it was created just now also this collection uh, is also created for us collection named users Okay, so this verifies that uh, this user model, this user string that we are giving, it will connect to, it will point to this collection. And just to give you an example, let's say if I uh, say employees, right? If I say employees here, and if I re uh, rerun this file, and just to show you, if I do show collections now, this employees uh, collection is also created because this time we have explicitly mentioned that we want to use this uh, collection, but this collection was not present earlier. So it was created just now. Okay. So this was just to give you an example. We just want to use the user's collection. Okay. So DB dot drop. Mm, db dot employees dot drop collection should be an option mm, db dot mm -hmm. employees dot drop is a function so if i do so collections now there now we only have one collection users okay <coughs> what is a model there is a question what is a model model is this uh, variable that we have just created so uh, mongoose says if you want to if you want to send queries to a collection you will have to uh, create a model uh, class. So this is a class, right? This this variable that we have just created, it is a class, which is created by this mongoose.model function. Now, 
uh, this class has a lot of uh, useful features, useful functions. So this is created for uh, this is created for us by this library to send queries to users model. Does that make sense? Okay. So we will uh, we will we can now write code here to create a user uh, document. Okay. So how do we create a user document? We say user dot create. And inside this, we insert uh, multi, we can insert, insert multiple docs or we can insert a single, uh, single object. Okay. So we can either give uh, an array of documents or we can give a single document, right? So it takes both, both types of parameters. So I'm giving just a name here. So let's say name is Arun Kumar. And what other properties are there? Gender, email, password, all these properties. Let's copy these and we will add values here. Let's say mail. For email, let's say Arun dot Kumar at example dot com. For password, let's say uh, some password. For date, we will create date of birth as uh, nineteen ninety two. Okay, some random date. Verified, let's say true. Followers count, let's say 34. Okay, uh, this create function is going to return a promise. You can see it returns a promise. So we have to await this promise. That's why we created an async function here. So when, when we await this promise, we will get the user object. Okay. Uh, if I log user uh, object here, you will see what is created. So I'm going to restart this file. I'm going to rerun this file. And you will see here, we get name, gender, email, password, date of birth, verified email. <laughs> the same thing that we added over here, but also we get uh, ID, right? We get uh, underscore ID property. And we also get under underscore under uh, double underscore V zero. So don't worry about this. This is the internal. This is for internal working of uh, Mongoose. This is for internal working of MongoDB. But we will also use this ID as a unique identifier for each document. But rest of the fields are the fields that we have just passed here. Okay. So name, gender, email all these things. So you can see here, this is a date. This is of type date. This is of type Boolean and this is of type number. Okay. If you want me to show you, uh, if I show you db.users.find, this Arun Kumar document is also created over here, right? Date of birth here is this ISO date. Right. Can you connect database using cluster? My system is preventing to access database by third party. Uh, you can do that if you have connection URI. You just have to replace this. Okay. You just have to replace this string with the, with your connection URI. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'll have to create the cluster and everything. But if you have already created, you can replace this string, right? Sachin, it's the only change that you will have to do. Rest of the things will be okay. Rest of the things will be same for you. What is the difference between cluster and connection string? Uh, they, they are not the same thing or you cannot Say, uh, this is not a correct question to give the difference. 
I will explain what e each of the things mean, right? Connection string is the string uh, where you have, where you tell uh, mongoose to which, uh, with connection string, you tell mongoose uh, which database you want to connect to, right? So I want to connect to local, my local host database. This is uh, one to 7.0. This is IP address for uh, local host. So I am actually connecting to the local uh, D MongoDB running on my local machine. But if I give the, if I let's say give some other uh, connection URL, which is uh, remote uh, MongoDB, which is not on my machine, but which is on the internet, right? Uh, there I will have to give some other type of connection string. So cluster means uh, you just uh, host MongoDB on the cloud. So if I have to show you, I think it's better to show you MongoDB cluster. So this is, uh, this is a cloud provider solution where you don't have to install MongoDB on your machine, right? You can uh, sign in and actually create the MongoDB server here. It will give you a MongoDB server and you can connect to that from anywhere, right? So if I have to, this is PT web six, I can connect to this or I can connect to this change. This. So I have, I already have an account. If you don't have an account, you can uh, sign up for an account. And once you sign up, you will see this dashboard where it will give you an option to create a, uh, to create a cluster, right? I already have this. I can terminate this uh, to show you what you will see. So it is shutting down. Yeah. Once you create your account, you will see a dashboard like this. After you, uh, this is MongoDB on cloud. Okay. So you don't have to uh, install locally. You can connect to this. Uh, cloud server of MongoDB, right? If I click on build a database and I want to have a free version, so I will click on, click on this uh, third part, which is 512 megabytes of database, which is more than enough for us. It will create a database for us, right? So it is saying M0 cluster provisioning. This is the cluster. And how would you like to connect? I will, uh, for this, you, you need to have security. So username and password, you can uh, have some username and password. So I can remove this and I can say uh, username and for password, I will just have ptweb8b. Okay, for username also, we will have this. So once we create a user, we can use these credentials to connect to this database. Now, where would you like to connect from? Uh, I would like to connect from anywhere. Uh, so let's remove this. So I say 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and this is from anywhere, anywhere. Okay. So uh, after this, you say finish and close and go to database. This is the cluster, which is cloud MongoDB server only, nothing else. Cluster, MongoDB cluster means MongoDB on the cloud. Instead of running on your machine, it will now run on uh some uh cloud server okay so if you have to show how to connect to this you can say connect with mongodb shell you can also connect with mongodb shell so i already have mongo sh on my machine 
you can check for windows you can download mongo sh here but you also have mongo sh so i will just use uh, this connection string right going to terminal uh, opening a new tab i have two tabs of ter uh, in terminal now this one and this one so i'm just pasting this command it says mongo sh which is running the mongo sh mongo sh terminal and this is the connection string for my database this is the connection string right earlier it was very simple but this time it is using some uh, internet uh, host right instead of using localhost this time it is using something from internet and i can change this to uh, we don't we don't need uh, this is an optional parameter if i do this it will ask for password if i do that you can say that this is how uh, we um, this, is, this is the database we are connecting to okay so it is now uh, if i do show dbs we have uh, these two dbs admin and local okay 8 gigabytes of database why do i need this what is this uh, show collections okay for some reason it is already showing 8 gigabytes although i only have 512 megabytes of storage available on this db okay now instead of connecting to our local machine uh, instead of connecting to our local database we can also connect to our remote database okay so i'll just replace it like this and here you want to have some other database so let's say mongoose demo right and here instead of credentials you want to give the username and colon password with this you are able to connect to uh, a remote database which is running on cloud right that's the only difference you have to take care of uh, to run uh, to connect to any type of whether local database you want to connect to or remote database you want to connect to okay so if i do this if i do the same if i run the same thing again then you can see it is taking some time now and it says connected to database it is not as fast as our local database because it is sending a request to a uh, network right it is sending a request over the network but still it is still working fine so if i show you on my remote database if i show you show dbs this time you will also see a mongodb demo right so Mong mongoose demo and if i say show collections this time you will see users okay and this arun kumar is also created over here okay so this is how you uh, choose to work with either your local local mongodb server or remote mongodb server that's the only difference does that does that answer your question okay so i'm i'm switching to my local database because we don't need we this is the only difference so if you want you can connect to any remote database as well clear any questions till this point okay so this is how you create this is one way of creating a single user right so if i want to create if we want to create multiple users it is very simple you just have to pass multiple users in an array right 
So let's change the name to Varun. And Tarun. Okay. And then we'll try with this. Close the array and say users instead of user. I'm going to say uh, users. And if I run this, you will see that this time we get multiple users in an array. Okay. Clear? So I can show you in Mongo shell as well, my local uh, DB. This time we have uh, three users. Cool. This time we have created three users, Arun, Varun, Tarun, like that. Clear? So this is uh, how you create single or multiple documents. There is another way, which is, uh, which is shown over here. You, you, <clears throat> you create a new object like this, a uh, new, uh, here it is saying cat, but we will say user. We will give all the values and then we will say user dot save like that, right? So just to give you an example, user equals to new user, right? And here we will give all these values. Say uh, Tanme. I'm not changing anything else. If I log a uh, user now, here it will uh, not be added to the database. It will not be added to the database yet because we are not using a create function here like this, but we are just creating an object of this class, right? You all know how, where new keyword is used when we want to create an object from a class, right? So if I if we log the user, you will see that the user here has some ID, but it does not have underscore underscore V. And if you go and switch and look at all the users, there are still only three users right now. So Tanmay is not added over here. To add uh, Tanmay to database, what you have to do is you have to say user dot save. Okay. You have to do it like this. So with this, if you see this time Tanma has been added to the database. Clear? The uh, create part is clear, right? You create single document. Uh, which part do you want me to repeat? You can create single document by passing an object in this function, or you can create multiple documents by passing the array of uh, objects, or you can create <clears throat> a user by creating an object of this class and uh, calling the save function, right? Save uh, saves this document by inserting a new document into the database. Is this clear? Mm -hmm. uh, which part do you want me to repeat if uh, something is not clear? Rajshri, is this clear? Anyway, uh, this uh, we are done with create function. Let's move to another function where we want to uh, read, right? Uh, or 
find so instead of create uh, calling create this time i will call it i will call the read function so we want to read all the users so we say users await users dot find sorry await user this is the model we have and we we just run find and we have to await the response with this we will get all the users no matter how many users are there even if there are thousand or ten thousand we will get all the users so you see we are getting four users in an array okay there is a question if there is field if uh, a field is missing will it still create the document right will it still save the data well uh, for now yes because we have not uh, made any of the fields compulsory these uh, these are not compulsory by default mm -hmm. right so even if we miss any field it will still create so let's say if i remove all these fields and say i say omang right and if i call the create function again So this will still create uh, the document. Okay, you will see the last uh, document is Umang, and there are password, date of birth, verified email address. All these properties are missing. Okay, so there is no restriction as such. Okay, and you are you also want uh, another question is. If we add number instead of string in this name, will it show any error? So let's say I add 1099, right? What is going to happen? Uh, it will convert this string. It will try to convert this number into a string first, right? Then it will save into database. So just to run uh, this. So see the number is converted to a string. Okay. But there is another question if, let's say, uh, we give a follower count inside follower count. If we give to instead of a number, if we give, let's say, a string, if we give a string, let's call this uh, 1100, right? So if we give a string, it will try to convert follower count into a number because we have said over here that this is going to be a number property. So it will try to convert this into a number. So if I show you this, then the follower count is converted to a number and then it is saved to the database. So blueprint is not validating. It is sort of helping you, right? But actually see now, if we try to give a num a, a value which is which cannot be converted into a number, then what is going to happen? It will throw an error. It will throw an error saying uh, that uh, you will see that valid, there is validation error. It says user validation failed, follower count cast to number failed for this value. Okay. So it is doing some, some validation, but it cannot, uh, it is also helping you to change from one format to another. Okay, so let's not worry about that, all of these nitty gritty details right now. Let's just try to understand the basic flows so that at least everybody knows how to do CRUD operations. Then we can talk about all these nitty gritty details. Okay. Yeah, yeah. your questions are valid. I'm not saying they are not valid questions. I'm just saying you have to prioritize which things you which questions you want answers of right first we want answers of questions which are a more important to us more important to everybody okay so this uh find is clear right if i uh if i call uh, user dot find function then it will give me all the uh, users from the database right all the users and we have also seen that we can apply filters uh, in this find function. So we say, if I want, 
Varun Kumar, right? If I want all the users with this name, how can I do that? You will see this time uh, we will get only one uh, document which is matching this, uh, this filter, this object, right? Filter object that we have provided. So it is working just like the same, uh, just same we that we have looked uh, yesterday, that we looked at yesterday, right? All types of operations are also suggested here. If you, let's say, want to check whether the name is, say, greater than uh, or, let's say, less than equal to V, right? If you do this, you will see that this time we will get all the uh, we will not get Varun because Varun is bigger than uh, this value, right? So we are getting Umang, uh, these numbers, Tanmay, Tarun, everything, right? If we say M here, then you will see we, we get Arun and these two documents. So these uh, all these operations, operators are also supported, right? Then we can also do uh, user dot uh, find by ID, which is very important. So if you have an ID, let's say let's find with this ID. So ID here you can pass as an string, as a string, and it will automatically convert to an object ID, right? So if I do console dot log user okay let me comment this part so if i run this file again you will see we get instead of an array we get a document a single object right here we were getting an array because we were finding multiple but this time we are finding only one finding by id okay we can only pass id property id value here okay so this is either going to be a null if uh, no object with this ID exists, uh, or it is going, or is it going to be uh, some single document, right? So if I change, let's say one to two, because there will be no document with this ID, then you will get null value, right? So another thing that I will show you, let's say if I change E uh, to uh, six, so there is actually some pattern for ID and this pattern is breaking the pattern that was earlier. I am changing uh, some alphabetic character to a numeric character. So if I try to do this, this time uh, also you will get null, right? Uh, let me show you. If I actually change uh, this ID value to something which does not look like a MongoDB ID. So this time you will get an error saying that it cannot cast uh, this value to object ID because uh, there is some pattern for this, okay? So it has to have a specific number of characters and it has to follow the pattern. So it will make sure that you try to uh, take care of these errors in your code, right? So this is how you can get uh, a single user by uh, by their id but if you also want to uh, just use say user dot find uh, find one so you can do that right so you can say name over on kumar and email say I, I think everybody has the same email let's use gender right so if we do this uh, let me log
so this time uh, we can also do find one right we have looked at find find by id and find one these are uh, these are enough for us to know how to uh, query and uh, read from database we have not given any operator here here this, at, you're talking about line number 105 and 106 so uh, we we use operators when we are not checking for exact values right so uh, by default we can also query using a normal key value pairs and this will uh, i have yesterday i yesterday told you yes uh, that if we don't use any operator these properties will be combined with and condition so both name and gender should match these values respectively then only it will filter out okay clear if we use operator let's say if we use some operator instead of giving exact values say i want to have or condition right and first condition i want to check the name matches uh, this uh, the second condition is say gender matches uh, male so if i do this then uh, what is going to happen by the way check this that it is uh, find one right it is not find so it will uh, try to filter all the all male or name Varun, right? Whether the user is male, whether the gender is male, or the name is Varun Kumar. Also, it will only give the first one that it finds, right? It is not going to give all of the users. So you see, we get Arun Kumar because the gender property matched here. Clear? If we change this to, let's say, find, then we will get all the documents where either the gender is male or the name is Varun Kumar. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> so these are three ways to find your documents uh find with uh, an object find by id where you give a string value a valid string id and find one where you give uh, an object and it will give you the first one that it finds okay so this is this is a uh, simple uh, how to do uh, how to read from database or the sim simple functions that we should know about. And then let's talk about update, right? So I will say update and save this file. Right, so I want to, uh, I want to update uh, a user. So there are a few ways to do that. I say await user update one is the simplest one. Here we give uh, the first object we give is the search parameters, right? With we with which we want to search. Uh, sorry, with which we want to filter the first document that we want to update. It will check all the documents and it will uh, find the document. The first one that it finds, it will update and. Uh, that's it right so we are going to say let's say i am going to update the one the with the name arun kumar any document that has the name arun kumar the first document that we find we will update that and the second proper uh, second parameter we have to pass is an object with a set uh, operator and let's say i want to change the name to uh, Gauri Kapoor and gender to let's say female right I will pro uh, change these properties then I can also change say email to Gauri dot Kapoor 
at example.com right this is going to update the document and <clears throat> if you log what we get from here if you log this uh, uh, this value that we get you can see what what it is going to return right so it is going to return the response saying acknowledge true modified count zero matched count one absurd and all that so this is not necessarily going to be the user document you're looking for okay so what you have to do is you have to uh, th this is not the best way for this reason for uh, because we are not getting the updated document we uh, this is not the best approach so we can say find one and uh, update so find one and update will give you the document okay so uh, this time the user uh, we want to update user gauri kapoor with some other name say tanya uh, okay so this time we will see what we will get in the user object so this time this is going to find the user and the user is with the name gauri kapoor and it will update the value if i show you in the database the first document is actually tanya arora but here the in the log we are getting the user with the name and previous values so basically this is also not giving us the updated document although it is giving us a document but it is giving us the document before the update so if you want to actually uh, get the latest value so what you can do is say user dot uh, i think there was a function uh hmm you will have to fetch the document again right so you will have to say uh user equals to since this is a const you will have to fetch the document again user dot find and this time you will find with let's say name okay so uh, this time the user is removed uh, gauri khan gauri kapoor is removed and let's say this is somebody else uh, uh okay with this uh, we will search the user again and then we will have the updated document this one okay what if there are two users of the same name i am saying uh, again and again that it will only update the first one that it finds there can be multiple matches but it will update the first one uh, does ev is every function which we used in terminal also available here uh, not exactly because uh, we used insert insert many they are not available here but uh, create is create is uh, a replacement for that and also find one and update all these functions were not available in terminal so some functions which were available in terminal are not available here and some functions which were which are uh, not available in terminal but are available here in mongoose okay so this is not the best way to actually uh, update the best way is to always try to update with a unique identifier otherwise you will have unexpected results so always try to update with let's say id right so it says find by id and update so instead of giving this property you give id right so just to show you we get uh, these values 
if I change this to something, let's say A, B, C, D, uh, we still get old values, right? So what we want to do is we want to uh, this find by ID and update will also give you old values. Here, you just have to say user uh, dot uh, user equals to await user dot find by ID. You will just again uh, find by ID to get the updated value. And you will say find by ID, right? With this, you will always get the updated value. So let's say PQR and this time you will get the updated value. Okay. So try to use find by ID and update so that you, you, you can uniquely find. Otherwise you will run into expect unexpected problems. Okay. So update user dot update one and update many are there. They are available here but try to use find by id and update if you are only updating the first document right if you are only updating one document try to use find by id and update okay so uh, you can use update one and update many just like we have talked about but uh, we are not going to look at the implementation Let's come to delete part. Again, try to use uh, find by ID and delete instead of uh, delete one and delete many, right? So find by ID and delete, use this. Okay, so console dot log user. What is problem with this? A sync function. Okay, delete we cannot use. Okay, so with uh, delete, we can easily say that user with this ID will be deleted. So if I show you, this is the I. Uh, this is the this is the user which is present, and we want to delete this by ID. And if I run this, you can say, you can see that we get the document here as a result we get the document but it is uh, if i show you here the first document is now removed okay we are not getting uh, pqr this time so it is deleted clear so try to use this one but all, it also gives you uh, user dot delete one and delete many these are also available but try to if you're deleting only one try to uh, delete with a unique identifier like id okay and if you're deleting many then you have to uh, use delete many so if you let's say you want to delete i will delete all of the users where gender is male so if we do this you will see that uh, acknowledged true delete count is six mm -hmm. so it deleted multiple users so instead of getting all the users here you will see this response okay don't uh, expect that the whole array will be uh, sent in the users variable okay so if you see 
there are no more documents and everything is deleted. Clear? Any questions so far with these CRUD operations that we have looked at? Anybody has any questions? No? Can you explain again the flow of the program? Okay, uh, in this program, it is just a script. It is not the, uh, it is not running any logic. So uh, first we are, we are uh, defining this function, connect database. Then we are defining this model. Then we are defining these functions. Until this point, we are not executing anything. We are just uh, connect, uh, we are just defining these things. After this, uh, we start calling this function, connect database. Connecting with database will actually establish the connection. And once the connection is established, a few things will happen. If a database, uh, if these credentials are correct, right? If this uh, connection string is correct, then the connection will happen. Otherwise, the connection will not happen. Also, if the if this connection uh, string is correct, then this uh, database, if this database is not created, then uh, it will create, Mongoose will create the database for you with this name, Mongoose demo. Right, if you are interacting with the database at all, and if there is uh, this collection not present, if this collection is not present, say you are uh, naming your model as a user, it will interact with the user's collection, wow. and if that collection is not present, that collection will be also created. So connect database will do all of that. After that, since it is returning a promise, okay, since this is an asynchronous function, all asynchronous functions return a promise even though we are not returning anything but uh, it will wrap uh, this undefined we are we are actually not returning anything so undefined will be returned from returned from this function but it will be wrapped in a promise so we, that's why we can use dot then here okay so all the async fu async function asynchronous functions are actually returning a null promise or some rejected promise or fulfilled promise, whatever. So uh, if everything goes well here, if everything goes well, then we will run this function, whatever functions we, whatever function we place here. So if we place create function, then it will call create function. This create function will do whatever is inside this function. Okay, so this is the flow of the program, clear? Once everything is executed, you can see uh, that here we will see the response. Why are we passing CRUD function to undefined in connect database? We are not passing uh, to undefined. We are saying something like run this. We are doing this thing. Okay. But since uh, we have, we pass a callback to that, then, right? We pass a function. So instead of passing, uh, uh, call an arrow function like this, we can pass our function that we want to execute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it looks like you're not very comfortable with the syntax of async functions, but it's fine. You, you will understand all these things. Okay, any questions? Anybody has any questions? Only a few people are, few students are active during the class. I'm not sure if rest of the students go through lecture ever or not. How do we get URL to connect to DB? Uh, if this is your local database, if you're connecting to local database, you can uh, copy this URL. This will always work for you. So this is the port number on which, uh, this is the port number on which MongoDB server is running. 
this is the host name for local host this is mongodb protocol so mongodb colon slash slash local host uh, ip address then this port colon port number slash name of the database you want to connect to okay you can also get this url from uh, mongo sh so if you run mongo sh uh, you will see this url this one here you you don't have the database name so you can add the database name right if you're connecting to remote database then you will have to pass a uh, string for that database which you can get from the uh, which you can get from here connect button right connect button mongo shell and this is the this is the string and you can also pass your username and password here so just like i have here mongodb plus srv colon slash slash this is the username and this is the password after that at the rate is there and then uh, this is the connection uh, string rest of the connection string okay so if i add uh, let's say if i just instead of passing username and a password here i can also do this ptweb 8b colon ptweb 8b at the rate so it will not ask me for username or password but if i if i remove these if i remove these username and password mongo shell will ask me username and password okay so uh okay see this time it is not working it is just connected but it is not working clear uh no http is required before mongodb this is actually replacing http or https this is the protocol this is not http type of request when we connect to database this is not http type of request this is some other type of request okay next step is to connect to express now uh, if we are comfortable with all these functions now we can start uh, building a rest api or a server with we can start building our apis where we send the request for, uh, from browser or from uh, any anywhere right we can start sending request and then those requests will be handled next uh, next step is to integrate all of this with an express application okay clear all right uh let's take a let's take a short break uh let's resume at 9 27 okay no 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 9 9 9 30 okay fine 9 30 please come back by 9 30 i'll start at sharp 9 30. okay so we have looked at how to do cred operations how to send cred requests to database using mongoose now mongoose is just a tool we have to use mongoose with the express applications right we cannot just uh, run the run the script like this we have to use uh, with uh, while making a an api request from outside right so we will have to actually build a server for this 
And to build a server, we need Express. I'm going to install Express. We already have Mongoose here. So we will build with an uh, Express application. OK, so I'm going to actually copy uh, where did we define all those routes in app.js, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to copy this file here. Let me call this index.js. So what is happening here? We are actually uh, importing Express. Uh, then we are uh, fetching all these functions from here, employee.js. So let's copy that as well. We're getting all these functions and uh, we will change the implementation for these functions. Earlier, these functions were interacting with a uh, file system, right? To read uh, or update or delete employee information. This time around, <clears throat> we will not uh, dep be dependent on file storage. This time we will be actually uh, communicating with database. I am just copying with control Z and pasting with control V. But you have to uh, select the folder and then paste. Okay. So uh, then we are creating an express app and then we are using uh, express.json middleware, which is uh, converting the request body into a JSON data, okay, into a JSON object. Then we have defined all these, uh, all these endpoints. Either you can define all these endpoints in this file, or you can define a router, uh, express router and use that router. Okay. Uh, for now, let's just use this, whatever we have. We don't need to change anything. This is going to be a very small application. After that, we are starting the app, uh, we are starting the server on port number 3000. Okay. So any request I make to slash employee slash all will actually uh, get all the employees and send that in the response. But this time, instead of uh, reading this from a file, we have to uh, read from MongoDB, okay? So if, uh, to uh, integrate MongoDB, we will have to create a file. So I'm going to say connect database. So I'm creating a fo folder called DB. In, in that, I'm creating a function called ConnectDB. This is nothing but uh, this, okay? So we have nothing but mongoose.connect and let's export this function. Module.exports is connect database, this function. And we will start our application once we are successfully able to connect with the database. So uh, I'm going to say, Connect DB. This is imported from DB and this file. And we'll say dot then this, right? If the connection is successful, only then we will start our application. Otherwise, because if we are not able to connect to database, then there is no point in listening to request. Okay. So once the DB uh, connection is successful, then you can uh, listen for request. So suppose we get employees slash all request. So this time you have to change the implementation and you have to make the make a query to employees collection, right? So in this database, let's say, let me change this to employees. Right, employees. This time we will uh, connect with employees database, and I will show you Mongo as such. So DBs, we have this employees uh, database. Uh, we can remove this database, but for now let's just use this 
later on we will remove this database and create a new one okay so we have show collections we have employees collection if i show you db.employees.find then there are all these uh, all these objects okay so uh, name gender designation date of birth date of joining hobbies all this so <clears throat> Before we can make any request to this employees collection, we have to create a model, a mongoose model, right? So I'm going to create that employee dot model dot JS. Okay. I'm going to create a model here. So I'm going to say employee equals to mongoose. and we will say model okay inside this we will define all these properties that we need so let me copy this let me replace this with string let me replace this with uh, string this is also going to be a string this is going to be a date This is also going to be a date. And this is the tricky one. We have not looked at this. So how do we define an array of string, right? So to define array of string, we say array. Inside that we pass the string, okay? This also is going to be a string. This is going to be a Boolean. This is going to be a Boolean. Rest of the things, I think they are all strings okay so this is how you can create a model and you can export this model employee model right once the employee model is defined we can now start uh, okay first thing that we have to do is we also have to add the uh, name of the model <coughs> so that it can start communicating to the correct collection name so this uh, employee model let's use this in the employees file okay so we will uh, update all of these things later on first let's just use employee dot find this will give all the employees okay So we will return all the employees. Let's test this once. Uh, then we will uh, do update and create and uh, remove whatever. Okay. So we don't. It, this time we will, we won't need this file. So I'm going to start my server. This is a server now. So I'm going to start this server by saying node mon index.js and it says connect database dot then is not a function so that is weird connect database this is a function and dot then is not a function this is so weird why are we getting this? Mm, connect database. Return statement inside where? There? This one? No, no, it's not a problem. Mm, okay. I'm going to... move this to here let me check why it is not working this connect database is this function c 
cd07 node mod index uh let me remove this file don't want to remove this file connect database is actually a function Mm, okay. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Very sharp eye. Uh, so they, we, we call this, then only we get the promise. Okay. So this time we say connected to database then we say server listening okay so once this is working now we can start uh, making a request so i will make a request so i will say employee uh, get request there should be a get request somewhere okay slash employee slash all right once we do this we don't need body here So if we do this, then you can see we get uh, so many results. All these results we get, right? All of this is coming from our database that I have added, okay? Clear? Okay, so uh, all these documents are coming from uh, this time they are not coming from a file rather they are coming from a database by using uh, by using this this employee model right similarly we can create a we can create a function we can change the logic here to add employee right so we will say const employee employee dot create and we will pass the data object here and we will return the employee this is going to add this is going to be as simple as that right adding employee is going to be very simple this time so uh what what do we need to pass here so i'm just going to copy one employee And this time I will make a post request to employee. Okay. Server is re has restarted. I will pass this body and this data. Right. Uh, we will have to remove this one. Okay. So this time I'm going to say Monica Bing. Female chef cooking profile image. Let's keep this is married through all of that. Okay, email we can change to let's say Monica <laughs> and password. Let's keep this. So if I send this request, you will see we are getting successful response with name of uh with this name and all these properties and id we are getting this id okay so this this means if i show you in the employees collection db dot employee dot find with name say monica bing you we have this uh just inserted now okay clear all right so uh we have add we have changed two functions this uh we have changed get all employees and we have changed add employees you don't need this uh 
we don't need to update in file now. So let's remove this. How do we update uh, existing employee? We are getting an ID and we are getting the data. So with this, it is very simple with Mongo, with Mongoose, it is very simple to do. What we do here is we say const employee, we say uh, employee dot, since we have ID, we say find by ID and update. So we pass the uh, ID and we say dot set and we pass the data object. This will update anything that can be updated, right? So we let's say if we just send hobbies, then it will update hobbies. If we update profile, image, and whatever object we send here, it will update. But after update, we also have to uh, fetch the updated data, right? So this will use await. This will also use await find uh, by ID. So we will pass the ID and we will return the updated employee. Okay. One more thing here. Earlier, we were using a numerical ID. So we were parsing this as an integer. This time, we don't need it. We just use the string as it is. Right. So we have this ID. We will use this ID and we will send another request. So you will say uh, patch employee and this time we will pass a string ID and de uh, designation or whatever. We can change, let's say hobbies. Let's change hobby. And let's also change designation okay if we just pass these two parameters then only these will be updated but we will get the uh, complete object so you see this here the designation is updated and the hobbies are also updated if i change this to let's say volleyball to uh, foosball so this time we get uh, updated hobbies and designation. Okay. Clear update is also working. Very simple to do with Mongoose. And remove is very, very simple. So we will just say employee dot find by ID and delete. Right. If we uh, if we look at here, if we look at here, um, update is fine. We were earlier checking that if there is an employee, uh, which is if we are returning minus one, then uh, if that if we could not find the employee earlier, we were returning minus one. So we will do that. Uh, we can do that here as well, right? If uh, the employee is there, then we return the employee. Otherwise, we will return minus one, okay? So if, if I say delete, instead of patch, if I say delete, so this time, uh, okay, it says something wrong. Something went wrong. Uh, what is the error we are getting? Okay, we are par we are trying to parse into this int. We should not do this because this time we are actually using uh, a string a string ID. Okay, so this time it is deleted, right? Now it is, this employee is deleted. If I try to uh, update, let's say if I try to update now, since this is already deleted, we should also handle this. So if the employee is there, then uh, we will update this 
else we will return minus one. Okay. So if I try to uh, update this, the same ID, you will see employee with given ID does not exist, right? Because this time employee will be null. We will not be able to find, okay? So this is how you can replace uh, files storage to uh, very simple storage with storage, uh, MongoDB storage, right? And we are also we have also created a server. Any questions around this? This is all clear, right? So this is like a small PSC, and you can also build a, a front end uh, with this. This is this is going to give us. Uh, take us in the direction of becoming a full stack developer. Now you will build your own uh, backend as well as frontend. And in backend, now you have the idea of using uh, database as well. Yes, MongoDB makes things very simpler. In fact, Mongo, Mongoose is the one making things very simple for us. Okay. Now, I before we uh, end the session, I also want to give you some idea about uh, here. This is not the only way to create models. There is one more way, and that is a the, which is much more preferred way and much more advanced way than this. This is a very simple thing, but uh, the instead of passing an object second uh, as second parameter, we can uh, actually create employee schema. using mongoose uh, dot schema right in this you pass this object and this is much more advanced way because in this uh, you can also have uh, you can also take benefit of other features that mongoose provides i'm going to show you So this will work the same uh, as this will work as same thing that we have just did. Uh, but in this, you can also pass a third, uh, a second parameter, which is uh, say time stamps. So right, if I do time stamps and I will remove everything now. So employees dot delete. So this has deleted 504 documents. Uh, now, if we use this, and let's say if I create server is running, if I let's say create an employee like this, and you see it, uh, with name, gender, designation, date of birth, all these things, we also get these two properties called created at and updated at. These two properties are managed by MongoD Mongo's schema, Mongo's schema for us. So these two timestamps are managed and these are very helpful for all of the documents that we want. We actually want to understand when was this document created and when, uh, when was the last time it was updated. So these two uh, timestamps uh, prove to be very useful when you are building serious applications. Okay. So if I, let's say, update this, update uh, this, where is the ID? This, this is the ID. If I update this, uh, you see created at uh, age 2023, 02, 23, and this is the time. So currently we are seeing this as the time. If I update this, you see uh, updated at is now different than created at, which is like one minute after it was created. So these two timestamps are very useful. Also another uh, mo more advantage that you can get, get with schema is, in fact, which is also available by just passing an object here. Instead of having a, a shorthand 
uh, shorthand definition of your fields like this you can also have a fully customizable uh, 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 way to define your fields so you say uh, you instead of passing just data type you pass uh, the type here type is string and then you also say something like required so if you pass required as uh, true that means now you will not be able to create any document without this property so i'll try to create one right if i try to create name this time and let me open the logs the logs are here so it says employee validation failed name path is required so it won't let you create uh, a, a document without the fields which are required okay so you can also uh, do something like minimum length for strings you can do minimum length uh, say i want 10 okay if i say 10 then uh, if i use six characters here then it will say path name monica is shorter than the minimum allowed length so all these custom options you can provide and get much more out of uh, mongoose and all of these things are actually very useful and i will share a link uh, i will share a link with you folks and you can go through the documentation here uh, here you can check actually what are the options that you can provide here so like this default there is a there is an option of default and this documentation is actually very good so you can go through that to understand uh, what is how to use uh, mongoose for your advantage right how to make the most out of mongoose yeah yeah i will add the i will add the link right so defining your schema here you can actually go through this and this is i think uh much more detailed uh, page for schema types different different schema types and you can also see validation somewhere here you, if you want to read more about transactions you can read about here so validations you can read here so built-in validators custom error messages and all those things you can go through this right so if you want to let's say have a uh, validation on number you can say minimum and if you pass two things here it says uh, uh this is the number minimum number that is allowed and if this is valid uh, in violated this condition is violated then the error message will be this so i'm just typing uh, adding the link for this documentation you can go through the documentation and if you just explore you will find a lot of things right so just try to explore this documentation and you will find a lot of things which are uh, which is not possible to cover in uh, you know during the lecture everything is we are not uh, it is not possible to cover everything during the lecture right so you can have different different types of validators uh, you can just go through this document uh, documentation and read about all those right so i hope today's lecture was uh, exciting and somewhat you are getting the feeling of uh, progressing in knowing backend how backend works now we have actually covered database so this is taking you closer to your goal of becoming a full stack developer some interview questions tricks uh, about this topic actually uh, i think you should not expect all these things to be covered during the lecture uh, all of these things are for you to uh, figure out during by practicing a lot building applications during uh, lectures i can only uh, we we have only so much time right we we don't have enough time to cover everything so it is most important to cover the uh, basic things and the things that you should definitely know interview top interview questions and other these other things 
uh, are not the mandatory or basic requirement for you to become a full stack developer. You should do all of that in your own time, right? Okay. Sure. Uh, any questions about what we have covered so far? When will we connect this to front end? You you can since you already know front end, you can connect this to front end right now. All you have to do is just uh, allow front end request from some other domain by using course uh, course package. But uh, we will uh, look at we will create a completely fully functional uh, full stack application towards the end of the. Uh, end of this series when we have learned everything from uh, authentication, authorization, and uh, there are a, a few more topics that we should know. Then we will start building a full stack application. Okay. So. MVC framework actually uh you should already know about mvc framework but we will follow mvc we don't have a dedicated uh, lecture to discuss about mvc right the uh, mvc is sort of outdated after uh, we have segregated front end from back end front end is a completely different project back end is a completely different project so we don't have any concept of view from MVC. We have models, views, controllers, and this uh, we sort of use a th uh, three tier architecture now. So th we call it three tier architecture. If you're interested to know, I will explain. Uh, instead of th uh, MVC, we use three tier architecture. Uh, th these three tiers are the first one is your uh, front end. It will send request to backend server, and then we have database, right? This is three tier architecture. Clear? So on the top layer, there is front end. It will send request to server. Server will send request to database. And we sort of have uh, learned all of these things uh, to some capacity. Okay. Uh, this is it for today. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. And we'll look at uh, the next day. Tomorrow topic is going to be relations between your data, right? So we will look at that. Okay. Any other question? All right, uh, if there is no question, let's conclude the session today and I'll see you tomorrow.